Well, howdy. I, I know I said I wasn't going to have a chance to make another video anytime soon, but uh, I was wrong. And I received so many nice cards and letters from, from parents and so forth uh, from my video number one explaining socialism. Uh, I guess I brought a lot of joy to people, explaining that their children are not necessarily spawns of Satan and that instead simply want an extension of the sort of systems we have in place already in terms of, for example, national defense or, or, or public police forces. Well, I was glad I'm able to do that. Today's topic, though, I want to step back a little bit and say, well, now, wait a minute, though. Let's not relax too much because there's still some problems out there. There's communists. And I received this nice letter just a few days ago. Dear Cowboy Economist, this past Wednesday night, my preacher said that we ought to give things to the poor. Is he a communist and should I shoot him? Signed, Miffed in Midland. Well, first of all, don't go doing things that might lead to lengthy court appearances until you're absolutely certain. So I'm going to help out with that. And let's, let's find out, make sure that this preacher is actually a socialist. Now, step number one, a lot of people believe that socialist and communist are the same thing. Well, they're not any more the same as Texan and American are. As we all know, Texan is a very special kind of American in the same way that communist is a very special kind of socialist. And while we're all quite clear on what makes a Texan special, what is it that makes a communist special? That's what I'm going to tell you. Of course, we're going to have to trace this back to the works of Karl Marx. And I believe you're going to find this isn't just about sharing. It's about things like the surplus value, alienation, uh, let's see here, the uh, labor theory of value, and so on. The whole sharing thing, I think that our Miffed and Midland viewer is thinking of Jesus. It's a totally different theory. So what's this Marx all about? Well, uh, before I get into it, one thing I do want to say is that I, I know from experience that, that regardless of how I lay this out, there are going to be intelligent people who disagree with either my points of emphasis or my particular interpretations. And, and what I say to them is, go get your own camera and make your own video. Well, I'd be loving to watch it. But in the meantime, what you're going to get from me is what I like to think of as the cowboy economist's largely accurate interpretation of Karl Marx. And let me explain here, first of all, why it's so difficult. Good Lord Almighty. Three volumes of Das Kapital, which, by the way, is where we get the word capitalism. You didn't know you were a Marxist, did you? Uh, right here is the Communist Manifesto. The Marx and Engels Reader, a, a, a necessary uh, volume beside any bedside. And here, a contribution to the Critique of Political Economy by Karl Marx. Well, this isn't even all he wrote. So you can imagine why you get various different interpretations of Karl Marx when the guy just went on and on and on. So again, this will be mine. Uh, well, what does he have to say? Well, well, first thing to bear in mind is, is when Karl Marx was writing, did you know that this came out in 1848 and Charles Dickens' Christmas Carol was 1843? And indeed, my point number one, Marx thought that capitalism caused Dickensian conditions. He was hardly alone in this. Many people in that era believed that it was capitalism that brought us things like Tiny Tim, Bob Cratchit, and Mr. Scrooge. That it pitted class against class, worker against capitalist. And uh, that this is what was brought forth by the system of capitalism. Now, now not to say that feudalism was any better roses. And, and indeed, Marx, as a follower of Hegel, believed that history was moving through stages and that it was getting better. That in many respects, capitalism was actually superior to feudalism. But it wasn't great. It wasn't good enough yet. And so what is it that Karl Marx thought we needed? What was it that was missing in capitalism? What was his utopian society going to be like? Well, I'm glad I asked that question. Marx wanted people to have more control over their lives. He thought that you should be free to choose what you produced, how you produced it, how it was used after it was produced. He thought you should be free to cooperate with your fellow worker rather than have to compete with your fellow worker. He did not believe that you should be limited to only doing things that made a profit for somebody else. He thought that you be became essentially a cog in the machinery of your exploitation. Why, this is precisely how we view Bob Cratchit. That his 
efforts. And he was a hardworking man. His efforts were being used against him. The harder he worked, the more valuable he was to Mr. Scrooge, the more he was getting screwed by Scrooge, as I believe was the term they used back in those days. So now, again, uh, things are going to get you know, better at some point. But right now, under capitalism, you can only do those things that will make somebody happy and not the things that will make you happy. Now, Marx was uh, not the sort of person who was satisfied with simply holding up a, a placard that said down with capitalism. He wanted to understand it. He was a scholar. And so uh, in, in looking at this system that he thought was, was uh, constraining people's choices in their lives, uh, he thought, well, I need to figure out the, the scholarly aspect of this. And who would know this better? than the classical economists who first came up with these sort of capitalist type theories. For example, Adam Smith and David Ricardo. And indeed, to understand capitalism, Marx turned to the classical economists. Now, you might find this kind of surprising. You might think that, that, that Marx looking to these economists for help would be like the cow looking to the butcher. But he thought they understood basically what was going on, that they just came to the wrong conclusions, that they started off on the right foot, but then ended up stepping in some cow manure. So the particularly important part of what they talked about was what was called the labor theory of value. And what this said was, nothing of value is ever created without the expenditure of labor. That this pen right here, well, well, let's say it took five hours to make this pen. Well, then this pen's a five-hour pen. And even the tools that we might use, that would be labor-saving tools, well, they needed labor too. That he, they said that you trace this back, there ain't nothing that doesn't, at some level, must involve an expenditure of labor. Only labor creates value. And once again, this is not in disagreement with those economists who are pushing for capitalism. All right? So th this makes this whole thing make my head spin. And so, uh, what Marx asks is this, if Mr. Scrooge is not doing any labor, why is he keeping some money? If Bob Cratchit is doing all the labor, then if only labor creates value, then why do people who do not labor get to take something? Now, if Mr. Scrooge pitches in now and then, if Mr. Scrooge says, look, I'll take out the garbage today, or, or let me count that stack of pennies, or something like that, well, then certainly Mr. Scrooge deserves some sort of, uh, of compensation for this. But he doesn't deserve compensation for simply owning. Simply owning doesn't create anything, and yet these people are skimming off the top. Uh, I, I use an example sometimes when I'm, when I'm talking to the farmhands and explaining all this sort of thing, uh, that, and God bless her, I'm sure she's a wonderful person. But uh, Paris Hilton. Paris Hilton inherits all this wealth. She inherits ownership of the Hilton Empire. She can earn all her income while on a yacht in the Caribbean. Meanwhile, the people who work at the Hilton must go there and spend their day there. They must expend their labor at the site and thereby this is an unfair system. Why should she get to earn all kinds of money, and in fact a lot more money than they do, just sitting out there on her yacht in the Caribbean? This is what Karl Marx is getting to, and again, ironically, drawing right from the uh, classical economists. All right, let's see what else we got here. Now, oh, I know. Some people might say at this point, but Bob Cratchit might not have a job if it weren't for Mr. Scrooge. And, and you know what? The, the interesting thing here is Marx might not completely disagree with you there. Because one of the points he makes is that, that, that what goes on under capitalism is just under capitalism. In other words, and I, I don't remember the exact quote now, but it's something along the lines of uh, Marx says that the capitalist never takes anything that wasn't his to start with. In other words, the capitalist was entitled to profits because in the capitalist system, that's the way it works. That justice is determined by the system you're in. But then that doesn't make life any easier for Bob Cratchit. Uh, if you think about it, uh, why under slavery, it is entirely legal for a slave owner to own another human being. But that doesn't do a lot of good for the slave. Right? So, so the basic idea is, even though it might be just, and even though this might be a better system than we had before, it's still not exactly a bed of roses for everybody. That these, these workers are being exploited and, and uh, uh, that, you know, again, capitalism, uh, a necessary stage of history, but we're not to a point now where we truly have the choices that he thought we should have. Well, don't worry. Don't worry. Because, as it turns out, capitalism will destroy itself. Um, now, interestingly, 
Uh, oh, oh, uh, as this week is St. Patrick's Day, I hung up, I'm sure many of us have an Irish flag. I have one that I keep up next to my uh, American flag uh, when we have our, our, our John Birch meetings and so forth. Uh, but I brought down my Irish one here to hang it up for everybody to see. So uh, you're welcome. Now, uh, it's going to destroy itself. But before capitalism destroys itself, it becomes immensely popular. It takes over the world. All right. Why, for example, the, the Chinese embracing capitalism, why that would be right up what Marx would have said was going to happen. I mean, Marx never thought that there were going to be revolutions in places like Russia and, and, and Cuba and, and, and Vietnam and so forth. Uh, he thought that the capitalism would be immensely successful. All right. Uh, it would take over every country and every task in every country. You wouldn't be able to print, uh, I'm sorry, to paint just for pleasure anymore. You gotta paint for market. You get some velvet paintings of uh, Elvis or something like that, sell them at a street corner. Um, and uh, once this takes place, only then, only then will the downfall of capitalism take place. Now, there are a number of factors that apparently lead into this collapse of capitalism. I'm gonna narrow it down just, just one in the interest of time. And uh, it's related to this. And by the way, a lot of things in capitalism, Marx thought was in, important in terms of productivity. Here's another one right here. Productivity ends up being a positive for what we bring with us from capitalism into, into socialism and communism. Uh, but productivity also destroys capitalism in a number of ways. As I say, I'm just going to pick out one here. Um, as technology increases, so the owner of business is going to have an incentive to replace workers with machines. So this is going to start increasing uh, unemployment and underemployment. Well, we see this today. Uh, the self-checkout line, uh, me and the wife, we're going out to Arizona. And, and I, I was funding about riding horses. We're actually going to take an airplane. Uh, but when we get to the airport, I, I guarantee you, we're going to have to sit there and punch it all in ourselves and so forth. Hell, we might have to fly part of the way. I don't know. Uh, so uh, this is replacing, of course, why did they do this? Why did they put these machines in the airport that allow you to check in? Because they thought it might be fun for you? No, because they could lay somebody off. And, and, and that's the way capitalism works. We start replacing workers with machines. Unemployment goes up. Underemployment goes up. And initially, the workers are among the biggest supporters of capitalism. They buy into the propaganda from the capitalists and from the government. And by the way, uh, I sometimes hear people say, oh, the government, that, that's communist, that's socialist. The Marxists believe that the government is in cahoots with the capitalists. The Marxists do not see the government as their friend. They see it as their enemy. But, but at any rate, uh, the workers are buying into the uh, propaganda being put out by the capitalists and by the uh, government uh, until, until this unemployment is going up and up. And this causes pain. And of course, through pain, we have truth. Uh, I guess it's very much, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot my point number four. Hate to think I printed it for nothing. Um, through pain, we get truth. Th this is why typically the, the first few albums of a, of a band are, are their best ones. Uh, that's when they're suffering. That's when they can see the truth and so forth. W once, they get, once they get those big record contracts, th then they, they start putting out the crap. Um, but I believe it was, was Roger Daltrey who once said, I, I hope I die before I get old. Uh, he retracted that later. But nevertheless, it was a, 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 it's sort, of, sort of a comment on the fact that the early albums are always the best ones. Uh, and that this pain, pain allows you to see through what's really going on in life. Well, this is what happens to the unemployed people. As the unemployment rises, as their pain and misery rises, so they begin to realize, hey, wait a minute. I don't have to take this crap from, from Mr. Scrooge. And so Bob Cratchit will take a, like a, a I guess, a, a fireplace tool of some sort and beat Mr. Scrooge to death. He will expropriate the expropriator. Uh, and then we will move into socialism, all right? And, and socialism will actually look a lot like capitalism. I mean, Mr. Uh, uh, Bob Cratchit will still go to work every day, counting things and so forth, but there won't be an ownership class anymore. Things like Exxon and Microsoft and so forth will be owned in the same way that NASA or the University of Texas is, all right? Uh, communally, by, by all the people. So, but it still looks about the same. And did you know this? Marx did not think that socialism would be fair. He thought it was still an unfair system because under socialism, he figured that people would be paid about the same, but that your needs would be different. 
Well, you might not have any kids, and then somebody else got 10 kids, and then, then you know, or, or you might have the same number of kids as somebody else, but your kids are hogs, and they're eating all the time, or something like that. So, but one way or the other, it's still not fair, but it's better than capitalism, and that's the thing. You know, we go, go from slave-based society to feudalism, and he thought this was a natural uh, tendency of the way evolution worked in, in uh, human society. Slave-based feudalism, capitalism, socialism. Is socialism perfect? No, no, but it's getting there. It's getting to the state of the world where you get to do with your life what you want to do and not be bossed around by nobody. Now, uh, the... Next point I have here is that eventually in communism, what happens is that technology goes up so much that you just have a lot more choices. That, that if, uh, I'm going to exaggerate a little bit here if you don't mind, just to make my point. But uh, if in the morning you want to be a petroleum engineer, why well, you can do that. And, and, and if in the afternoon, well, I, I'd like to, to ride horses as, uh, for my living, well then you can do that. But, but you can live out your life the way you want to live it out. You, you can develop the skills you want, you can uh, associate with the people you want to and so forth. Uh, well, well, think about this. Uh, to, to make that not too pie in the sky, uh, if we go back 10, 20,000 years, what was your choice in life? Oh, I think I'll be a farmer. Why are you going to be a farmer? Because that's all there is. All right, so I'm going to be a farmer. Uh, well, as, as society, as technology evolved, and remember Marx tacks a lot of this onto the advent of capitalism, which he thinks is superior to what happened before. Uh, then all of a sudden, there's hardly any farmers anymore. People actually have more choices today than they did five, six hundred years ago, all right? So, so things are better. Things are moving towards this world where we have more choices over how we live our lives, except for these problems we have with capitalism. But, so capitalism destroys itself, move on to socialism, and then socialism finally evolves into communism. Uh, I think it's supposed to be uh, 18 months later. I, I, don't, I don't think he said anything like that. All right, so there you have uh, communism in a nutshell. Uh, as you can see, it's a very specific set of theories and assumptions. Um, and, and wanting to share things or, or wanting the government to provide nationalized health care or something like that, no more makes you a communist than buying a cowboy hat makes you a Texan. Now, um, the guy, Marx himself, was uh, a decent fellow. He was pretty much in line with the sort of Western ideals uh, that we have here in America, uh, Thomas Jefferson and so forth. He had some funny notions about how history worked and that this inevitability of things getting better and so forth, but, but whatever. What he essentially wanted was he wanted Tiny Tim and Bob Cratchit to have control over their lives. Now, you might be thinking right now, boy, have people really screwed with what Marx originally said, and you are right. Uh, what happened in the Soviet Union, for example, uh, didn't exactly lay out the way Marx wanted things. I, I think it, perhaps a way to think about this is, is the, the leaders of the communist revolution in, in, in Russia, kind of like uh, Two Live Crew's third album, uh, they were as Marxist as they want to be, which, which turns out to be not very much. That they basically were about as Marxist as they, as, as they, you know, they said the word as often as they could. Really what the Russian people got was they got a replacement of the czar and the landed aristocracy with the party commissar and the party. And the same sort of oppression, but different people oppressing you. Well, that, that's not real great. Now, uh, of course, we have the same thing happening in capitalism with these ideas being twisted. Well, the original idea, I'm going to read you here a little bit from Adam Smith, but the original idea with capitalism was supposed to be, it was, was largely anti-business and pro-consumer. And the reason being, because as Adam Smith, the father of capitalism, wrote, people of the same trade seldom meet together, even for merriment or diversion, that the conversation ends in a conspiracy against the public or in some contrivance to raise prices. So he's saying you, you can't trust the business people any further than you can throw them. So you gotta set them at each other's throats. That way they please us, the consumer. All right? Now, uh, that's the theory. What do we actually do? Well, we have a lot of people today who think that it's anti-capitalist uh, to do things that curb business power. And in fact, it's the exact opposite. We should be making sure that businesses can't have big mergers. We should be making sure that banks have to be open with us on, on, on um, the assets that are trading and so forth. But oh, no, no, that, that, that's uh, anti-business. That's anti-capitalist. No, no, no. It's pro-capitalist. So we've got the same problems that they had in, 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 in uh, communism where the original talk and then how it's being spread around through propaganda aren't the same thing. 
And don't even get me started on that whole Christianity thing in terms of what the Joker said in the first place and what people are doing about it afterwards. Well, I guess that's it for now. I've got to go get packed and so forth. And I want to thank you again for listening. And I hope I put some mind at ease.